All right, man, we back with a Forgotten Lions episode. I think this is like the third or fourth one. I kind of got to pick it up on the Forgotten Lions situation. But today, we talk about the 2006 ninth overall pick by y'all man's, y'all guy, y'all favorite GM to love to hate, Matt Millen. We're talking about Ernie Sims out of Florida State. Oh, oh, in the 90s when Florida State was the bomb diggity. I used to love that. Oh, oh, oh. And they'd be in the BCS, man. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about Ernie Sims, man. Linebacker. I don't know if people uh, forgot about Ernie Sims. I think some Lions fans have. There's been some Lions fans that's been born since Ernie Sims came to the league in, what, 2006? Whew, some that weren't even born yet that's Lions fans. So let's get into it. Check out our Forgotten Lions playlist if, you feel, if you've missed any of the episodes. I believe we've done Rob Porsche, Johnny Morton. Might have did somebody else so far. And we kind of keep going. I got some requests as well. Um, but... Um, yeah, Ernie Sims, he was, uh, undersized linebacker. He was a Tallahassee native. M most people that know about SEC country, Florida State is located in Tallahassee. I think that is the capital of Florida. Um, basically, he was a varsity uh, high school player in the eighth grade. So, he played five years of varsity football. He was a two-way player, tailback, uh, and also was a linebacker. Uh, also, people didn't know. I don't know if this deal holds true, but since 2013, he's the only, I think, linebacker to top the rivals recruiting list as the number one recruit in the land. Now, he was number one over Reggie Bush. That's saying a lot. How talented Ernie Sims was. He was a two-way player as well, too. They won four uh, state championships at his high school. I forget the name of it. Um, in Florida State, and eventually when this Corona thing come under, I have my setup where I can look my two computers up and all that. So I'm working on a better setup. But um, he lost his senior year, uh, I think in the, in the regional semifinals. But he won, you know, four state championships from the eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. And um, yeah, that was, you know, he's a beast. Florida's a beast. But they, he played in the smallest class, I think class A down there. But he stayed home. He got recruited by everybody, being a number one recruit in the land. Stay at home in, in Florida, you know, didn't start as a freshman. I think he started as a sophomore and junior, um, you know, turned pro. He got into a little bit of it, trouble at Florida State, but, hey, we all get into some trouble at time. Junior season to go that well, but he still was, I think, the ninth overall pick. That year, Mario uh, Williams was number one. Reggie Bush was number two. Uh, some notable guys that went behind Ernie Sims that year, I believe Matt Liner, Jay Cutler. I remember this draft. Um I think Dante Whitner, uh, Tom Bali also went later in that draft. I mean, it was a lot of really, really good players that went. I mean, that was in that draft. That draft was really good. Joseph Adai was also in that draft. And, woo, that, that draft was, uh, you know, that might deserve on my other channel. Check another channel while Goodfellas Sports TV, um, a flashback. I, I never thought about doing it, but a flashback, draft flashbacks, that might deserve one. That was a really, really good and interesting draft. I mean, you have people I just can't even remember right now that was in that that was in that draft, but he went um, ninth overall, slid a little bit because of some issues at Florida State in the bad season. But if you didn't see Ernie Sims play, he started the first like four seasons with the Lions, and then he had a shoulder injury. We we'll get into all of that, but he started for four seasons, didn't miss a game. He was a tackling machine. Uh, I think he played the weak side linebacker. Probably kind of moved around. Uh, at Florida State, I think he was an inside linebacker. He was dubbed as a linebacker that played uh, bigger than his size. He was like six foot, two hundred thirty pounds. He was kind of known for like like hitting hard, forcing fumbles. He was athletic, ran a four or five at the combine. But the problem with him was he hit so hard that he did damage to his body. You know, Ernie Sims was a was a missile. You know how athletic these linebackers are today. That was him. He was a missile. He hit you. He can go sideline to sideline. He was pretty good in coverage for the most part, um, but the problem with him was he used to he jacked his body up. You know, him and Lewis Delmas was another guy, and eventually we can get around to Lewis. They just they didn't have they was they played with reckless abandonment, and they would tear their bodies up. And eventually, you know, he spent what I think through 2009 the 10 season with the Lions. Um, he didn't have a really really long career because he played violent. Y'all remember Bob Sanders, the safety for the Indianapolis Colts? He was another dude that played very, very violent from the safety position. And when you undersize, when you play with all you know, violent, you hit hard, you ain't gonna have a long career. You know what I'm saying at all. But Ernie Sims was athletic. He didn't make a Pro Bowl, but you know he was a tackling machine. And pretty much, you know, 
you know, he just, you know, he was with that Rod Marinelli, Matt Millen era, and they just didn't really, you know, put the right people around a lot of guys back then. And, you know, I think a lot of people forgot how good he was and how athletic he was. He was a prodigy, you know, coming eighth grade playing varsity football, pretty good at Florida State, but the issue with him is he was just undersized. And, you know, he just played with a lot of heart, a lot of passion, and he hit hard. And, you know, I think 2010 he knocked his shoulder out, missed some weeks, and they ended up trading him in a three-team trade with Denver and Philly for tight end Tony Scheffler. So that's how we ended up getting Tony Scheffler. Tony Scheffler, I like Tony Scheffler. He's an athletic tight end. 10, the Lions have some type of infatuation. And to this day, in my Deontay Wilder voice, they still infatuated with tight ends. They traded Ernie Sims to the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles sent Denver, I think, a fifth-round pick back. Denver sent Tony Scheffler in the seventh to the Lions. You don't see too many three-team t- deals in a, um, in a National Football League. And, um, you know, Tony Scheffler ended up having, I think, getting injured and having a career in an injury or getting injured and moving on. But, you know, that was, you know, Ernie Sims. You know, he was a good player. They thought he was going to be like the next Derrick Brooks and Rod Marinelli's uh, defense. Didn't work out that way. Uh, who knows? Maybe he went to another franchise. It would have worked out a little bit different, but he was durable for his first four years. But obviously, his body couldn't really hold up to the, you know, to the to, to the, the punishment and the damage he was getting out. But love me some Ernie Sims back in the day. Athletic, you know, all these the linebackers that are today, that's athletic. He just didn't have the size, you know what I'm saying? But he put you in the mind of the Devin Smiths and the uh, Levante Davis. Davis of the world and guys of that nature. And he was probably truly ahead of his time, though, man. But, you know, one of the greatest high school football players that, you know, Tallahassee and Florida has ever known. So let me know what you remember about Ernie Sims in the comment section. He was on that on 16 Lion team, I believe, by the way. That had to be 2000. That was 2009. Yep. Yeah, or 8. Let me think. That was 2008. It had to be 2008, I believe. So let me know what you remember about Tony Sims. I mean, Ernie Sims, excuse me. Don't forget you can check out the Forgotten Lions playlist. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description if you got a business question, choir response, shit, video request, or you just want to chop it up. You want to have a convo, dialogue, whatever the situation may be. You can follow me. All the links in the description. You want to make a donation, just share the video. Best way to donate is share, share the video, but cash out PayPal in the description. Let me know your Ernie Sims story, which you remember about him in the comment section. One time for the one time we go.